Yemen has been under almost constant bombardment since March. A coalition led by Saudi Arabia has been trying to defeat a rebel army. Both sides have been accused of war crimes. But now lawyers say Britain could be breaking the law for selling the bombs that the Saudis are dropping. On the night of July 24th, coalition warplanes repeatedly struck a residential compound in the port city of Mocha. At least 65 civilians were killed, according to Human Rights Watch, who collected this footage and visited the site soon after the strike. The group says the compound was nearly a kilometre away from any military target. <laughs> The strike on Mocha is just one of many incidents where civilians have apparently been targeted in Saudi-led airstrikes. Earlier this year, we visited the remains of a water bottling plant which had been struck. The owner of the factory showed us a list of names. 13 workers were killed, including a teenage boy. The Saudi-led campaign has the backing of the UN Security Council, which gives it legitimacy under international law. The UK supports the coalition and, along with the United States and others, has been supplying some of the weapons used in the conflict. But attacks directed against civilians or civilian objects constitute grave violations of international humanitarian law. Now the UK has a very clear legal regime and that legal regime says that the UK won't provide licenses for arms exports if there is a clear risk there may be violations of international humanitarian law. Now the facts on the ground of what's happening in Yemen suggest there is that clear risk. And yet the government has continued to grant export licenses for arms sales to Saudi Arabia for use in Yemen. Lawyers for the group Campaign Against the Arms Trade told us they will take the government to court unless it stops. From the very beginning, the British government's response to these allegations has been to say that they've received repeated assurances from the Saudis that British weapons are being used in accordance with international law. But privately, I've been told that government lawyers and indeed officials are very worried indeed about the possibility of a legal challenge. At issue is whether the UK has done enough to satisfy itself that British weapons are not being used to commit war crimes. That is a requirement under the Arms Trade Treaty, which David Cameron championed and which came into force last year. A key piece of evidence cited by the lawyers came in an interview on Newsnight with the Foreign Secretary. The Saudis deny that there have been any breaches of international humanitarian law. Um, obviously, that denial alone is not enough. We need to see proper investigations. That admission is significant, say the authors of a separate legal opinion prepared for Amnesty International by three prominent lawyers. The British government has confirmed that it's aware of the allegations that violations of international law uh, are being committed on the ground in Yemen. And it is also aware that the assurances being given by the Saudi authorities are perhaps not watertight. That heightens the degree of scrutiny which they ought to be applying in the determination of whether any new weapons uh, should be uh, supplied. The 90-page legal opinion concludes, on the basis of the evidence available to us, any authorization by the UK of the transfer of weapons or other items to Saudi Arabia in circumstances where such weapons are capable of being used in the conflict in Yemen would constitute a breach by the UK of its obligations under domestic, European and international law.
The Saudis have consistently denied targeting civilians. They point out their campaign comes at the request of Yemen's internationally recognized government against a rebel force, the Houthis, who themselves stand accused of violating the laws of war. But Britain is not supplying weapons to the Houthis. A government spokesman told us, the UK government has stressed to the Saudi authorities the importance of conducting transparent investigations into all incidents where it's alleged that international humanitarian law has been breached. The UK government itself is not carrying out separate investigations into these incidents. Yemen is in the grip of one of the world's worst crises. Apart from the bombing, a blockade by coalition forces has caused acute shortages. We met people eating the leaves off thorn bushes in order to survive. A shaky ceasefire in place since yesterday has already been violated. The government should use its influence, in my view, to make sure that the ceasefire holds. We have considerable influence with the Saudi regime and with the coalition. And making sure the ceasefire holds is the best way of stopping this sort of apparent division in government policy between, on the one hand, blockading the ports, which is what the defence and foreign affairs are trying to do, whereas the uh, humanitarian and development wing of the British government is trying to get food and medicines and fuel in through those same ports. The arms trade treaty was supposed to make civilians safer in war zones. It was backed enthusiastically by the British government. Its first test may be in Yemen concerning the use of British weapons.